So, you've been hearing all about a 3-2-2 ad. This mythical thing that just gets better over time and never fatigues. And reduces costs over time while eliminating the need for over 90% of creative testing. Creative testing and scaling a brand is what everybody wants. Sadly, this is one of the most wildly misunderstood aspects of digital marketing, especially when it comes to Facebook. So let's take some of my friends, Hexclad, and let's build a 3-2-2 ad live right here. I'm at my desk. I'm going to show my screen in just a little bit. And I'm going to show you the best way to test your ads and the only way you're ever going to have to test ever again. This is going to let you scale your ad account with confidence and a plan. I'm going to show you the whole plan and I'm going to give you the reasons why the old way, the best practices way out of all of the experts and all of those other just clowns, why that doesn't work and why testing more and more ads by doing that thing more and more only is going to make things worse. And by the end of this, the only thing you're ever going to say is I'm never going to test an ad ever again. No gatekeeping, full transparency. This is the blueprint. I'm gonna show you exactly how it works. And yeah, I'm gonna share my screen and I'm going to build it step by step. We're going to make a top of funnel prospecting ad to use in broad, using the 322 method with DCTs for hex clad so they can scale their Facebook ad spend and create incremental lift across all of their channels in a way where they're not gonna have to touch this ad for weeks and it will only ever get better so they can automatically scale their budget with automated rules and not even really have to do anything other than hit refresh and see how much more money they're making every day. This is how you're supposed to manage Facebook. This is how the code was actually written by the engineers. This is how the folks like me who've been in the game for over a decade and have driven well over a billion dollars are able to manage eight and nine figure businesses in an hour or less a week. And this will fundamentally change your future. That being said, let's get to it. So the first thing we have to address is, why is ad testing a bad thing? So you've been told by folks who have no idea how Facebook works, that you should be testing a bunch of ads and that new ads do better than old ones. And the more testing you do, the more good ads you get, which makes sense, right? Well, for sure, for email and Google and Amazon, of course. For inventory and demand-based platforms, this makes complete sense. Email is a set inventory. You want to get the best click-through rate you can. Google and Amazon are demand-based platforms. You want to get the most amount of clicks for the least amount of money that's going to turn into sales for your business. These platforms define success as, can I get the click as fast as possible? Google's business model, Amazon's business model, their goal is to get you off of the platform as fast as possible so that you come back over and over again. And to be fair, Facebook was like this until 2018. But as of 2018, Facebook is completely different and fundamentally changed the game for all digital marketing and basically every social media channel in the world. Facebook used to be a PPC platform. When I started, there wasn't even a conversion pixel. There, there was only traffic and engagement campaigns. You literally couldn't do anything else. Lead gen ads hadn't even been invented yet. I was spending a million a day and we weren't even able to track a sale. The old guard of Taylor Holiday, Jordan Menard, Chase Chappelle and Ty Lopez, Zach Stuck, Ben Heath, etc., etc., etc. Those fellas learned how to use Facebook while it was still a knockoff of Google Display. They mastered it before the change. And to be fair, most of them don't touch it at all now, but will gladly take credit for all the success of what happens with them and their team on the platform and are seen as forward thinkers, which makes no sense. These guys learn from email experts and from Google search experts and Yahoo marketing experts. They never adapted. And you could say, well, they're adapting all the time, changing to all the latest changes. 
There hasn't been any significant change to the Facebook algorithm in over five years. If you think that iOS 14 was bad for your business, it's because you weren't using Facebook right in the first place. And anybody that says that that was bad for them needs to learn how to use the platform and they were three years late at that time. And I'm here today to show you why. And these folks, by the way, they run businesses built on the idea of sounding smart. And they sign good clients whose success often has very little to do with them. Like our man Zach and our friends at Hexclad. And they try to look busy to make their efforts look good. And to be fair, that's because generally speaking, an ad agency is a bank that takes your money and gives it back to you and takes a commission. And they have a sales pitch every week that says, please don't fire us because if we take all of the credit for everybody else on the team, this is how good we look. That's basically the first 15 to 20 minutes of every single agency call. And if your agency is talking to you like that, like if they're using terms like ROAS or contribution margin, you should fire them immediately. DM me, comment down below. If that's the kind of trouble that you're facing. Believe me, I have ways of helping you. If all of these YouTube videos aren't enough and you want more help, we'll get there. But that's not what today's all about. So their advice is to test as many ads as possible every week even. Test thousands of ads, but that makes no sense. Let me tell you why. There are basically three reasons for this. First, Facebook's business model is to retain attention for as long as possible, which is basically the exact opposite of Google. So if the business model is to do literally the exact opposite thing, why would the best practice on how to make your ads better have any similarity? Facebook is a machine learning platform, which means that it gets better and better with what you give it. As long as you don't change what you're giving it and force it to start over all the time. And running a bunch of ads alongside each other where they all cannibalize each other and the winners are declared on basically as little information of who got lucky in a short period of time. Relying on luck, like that's dumb. And also we can talk about the elephant in the room. When you're successful, the worst idea you could possibly have is trying to screw it up. Don't fix what isn't broken, especially when your biggest issue is you're not spending enough to take advantage of the opportunity you already have. So yeah, testing more when you could just spend more is f stupid. It makes no sense. I hear you, but, but, but. But, but, but. My new ads are doing better than the old ones that are fatiguing. How many times have you heard the ridiculously lame excuse that ad fatigue is a real thing? Ad fatigue is a product of operator error. Let me explain. Is it that all of your ads are effectively doomed? Or is it that all of those lottery picks you've decided to invest in, where most of them fail, by the way, is it that constantly testing a bunch of new ads that constantly cannibalize each other might just also be stealing sales from your old faithful creatives and they make their old ads just look bad? Maybe, just maybe. Running Facebook in 2013 like it was Google Display a decade ago is the reason that your ads fatigue. Isn't it ironic that all these new ads win at the exact same time the old ads die? Month after month, a bunch of new ads are all better than all the old ads. And chasing them has really only left you in the exact same place as when you got started. Maybe swimming in a circle is wasting your time and not leaning into the unfair advantage of a completely different technology isn't the path to leveraging the world's single greatest machine learning platform to curate consumer behavior and create intent. So what should we do instead? How do we take advantage of Facebook by using it the right way so that your results only ever get better with time? And we can launch tests every several weeks if we even need to. And we can spend our time scaling our business rather than chasing ROAS and creating a bunch of ad fatigue. And before you say it, Facebook works the same for everyone. One of the biggest lies that is perpetuated in the space is that every ad account is different. No, it isn't. No, 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 no. 
Facebook is software. Do you legitimately think it knows who you are or behaves differently because of who you are? Do you think you are so important or that your ad account is so special that the software literally works differently because you're the one using it? That's ridiculous. And now, before the next show starts, let's enjoy an intermission. We have. So let's get down to brass tacks. What is a 322 ad and why should I care? Well, let's get to it. The 322 ad method refers to a creative testing strategy for testing multiple variations of creative and ad copy and headlines. It involves using three different creatives, two primary texts and two headlines. By testing these different combinations, Facebook can gather data on which elements perform best and optimize the results on each subsequent impression delivered. The goal of the 322 method is to let the machine learning and AI find the winning combination of all of your creative elements, which leads to better and better performance, such as lower cost per acquisition and better estimated action rate, so that not only are you getting more efficient results, but the quality and volume of the impressions that you're delivering, literally where your ads get shown and who they get shown to, gets better and better and better over time. We're not worried about silly things like targeting. The ads are the targeting. It's not 2016 anymore. We're not using silly things like cost caps. No, no, you know the best way to mitigate your costs? Run ads that just get better over time and spend more money when they become more efficient than you need them to be. Literally, when you create a margin with which to scale into, when you have a profitable scaling margin, just spend more money. This allows Facebook's AI to constantly make iterations and improve the customer experience using your content, which improves targeting, efficiency, value, volume, cost, and quality of the traffic coming to your website. By using the 322 method, advertisers like you and me can let Facebook make database decisions about which creative elements resonate best with their audience. Because remember, we're in business together. We're trying to help their business objectives so that they can help our business objectives. If we don't care about their business model, why should they care about yours? If your model of doing business is to completely disrespect all of your business partners, you're going to struggle to be in business. You can do that or you can play the lottery where you're basically running a bunch of tests that all cannibalize each other so that hopefully you get lucky and don't end up in the same place you started six months ago. Now, we're using machine learning and AI to make sure that every penny we spend makes the next penny spent smarter. Instead of relying on luck, we're leveraging the compounding interest of data in a machine learning environment. And because of how simple the 322 is, we can have extreme confidence in the insights that data is bringing us. So how do we know if it's a winner or a loser? Because almost everybody gets this wrong. And I'm not talking just about 322 ads. I'm talking about almost all winners and losers of creative tests are determined by information that has no value and really doesn't make any sense. So let's make it simple. Did it earn spend? Because yes, we're using a CBO. We're not using ABO. It's not 2013 anymore. We're letting the machine make the decisions because it's infinitely smarter than us. And because of our best path is to look retroactively into the past on data that we don't trust. Because do you really trust attribution? Do you think that if you have a thousand things that we're all trying to get lucky and then attributing one sale to one or the other because apparently the customer journey happens on a single day is a way of predicting the future? No, that makes no sense. We're gonna use CBO to leverage Facebook's machine learning because it's smart than you it's smarter than me and we don't need to work nearly as hard to try to get lucky when we can leverage the world's most powerful machine in a way that makes making money easy if it earned spend did the campaign get better and if you're playing along in the home game and you only have one campaign going inside your ad account which you absolutely should be doing then we can answer the really important question did it earn spend and if so 
Did our business improve? That's the real trick. Remember, when you're testing a bunch of ads by basically playing the lottery to see if it gets lucky and also destroying all of the ads that you have currently that are working, you got a thousand moving parts. When an ad spends a lot of money or doesn't spend money or gets a good ROAS or doesn't, do you have any idea of what that's doing to the bottom line of your business on any given day? No? So do you know if that ad is actually good for your business? Really, you're just saying, does a very small set of data based on an attribution model that we know isn't legitimate, does that make this platform look good? My question is, does that actually matter in any way? It only matters if you're an agency trying not to get fired. If you're an operator trying to make money, you don't give if you don't know what happens to your bottom line because a certain ad got more spend, then you have no idea how that ad actually impacted your business, which means you don't know if it's a winner or a loser. Using your ads in a 322 setup in a single campaign, you have extreme confidence. This ad got more spend. This ad made my campaign look better. This campaign getting better made my business look better. Boom, that's good. This ad got more spend, it made my campaign look worse and my business still got better. That happens all the time. And we're actually gonna build an ad today that might very well do that. Because while it looks worse on Facebook, it's creating incremental lift to all of the other channels which are way more profitable than Facebook could ever be. And we don't really care about attribution because that is about as real as a fucking unicorn. This ad earned spend. Our business got better. When this line goes up, so does this one. I've seen raccoons that are painting with their hand that can understand this concept. Roll the clip. Every canvas features the raccoon's adorable paw prints in multiple colors. Some pieces are minimalist in their aesthetic. Okay, what if it didn't get spent? Is our result good enough to increase our budget? Does it matter? If our blended CPA is below what we're allowed to spend to acquire a transaction, then who cares? The point is, it might not be getting spent now, but you don't know if it's a loser because you literally don't know the problem you're trying to solve with that ad yet because you can still spend more money. So just keep bumping up the budget until you legitimately have any data or you actually need to make a move. Wait until you hit a wall and your actual blended CPA is so high that you need to actually take any action to begin with. And yeah, you can 100% automate these budget changes. There's no reason a person should ever touch the budgets in a Facebook ad campaign. Again, it's not 2013. You can use the tools that are provided that are free to make making money easy. I don't understand why most people aren't doing this. Why they're fighting so tooth and nail to stick to literally doing it the wrong way based on the best practices a decade ago for a completely different platform. That doesn't make any sense. So let's get to actually building the ad because that's probably my favorite part. So we're gonna set up a brand new ad set here inside of our one campaign for Hexcloud. And what we're gonna do is make it a manual sales campaign because we don't wanna use Advantage Plus because we wanna actually make money. And we're going to name this Gordon Ramsay Reels because that's the creative concept we're gonna run with for this. And we're gonna go down and make sure that we've turned on dynamic creative like that because, well, we're not making ads anymore. We're setting up the machine to do all of the work for us because we're trying to leverage machine learning instead of playing the lottery, right? You've been playing along, you know exactly what to expect with this. So let's get into the ad name. We're just gonna go ahead and name it the same as the ad set because why not make analytics completely easy for everybody on the team? Why not make success easier to achieve? Let's just do it. Now, when we come on down here, we're gonna select videos. Now I've already, uploaded the creatives that we're gonna to use today into my business creatives folder called Hexclad. And we've got three videos of Gordon Ramsay. Now we've pulled this from the social media. These are basically high performing, almost viral reels. And the reason we're using that is because again, we're very specifically going to try to add top of funnel creatives, even at broad, and you can go check out the video on the 4PI analysis. Even at broad, Facebook is deciding where to use these ads. We specifically want ads that are more top of funnel because we're trying to create incremental lift to all channels. 
So the easiest way of going top of funnel is use really popular content. Use content that's already gone viral, that's already proven that it will earn reach and earn spend which means their CPMs are going to be really low and our daily frequency is going to be really low, which means we're going to reach a lot of people, which is going to drive more interest and more demand. So our search will work. And when more and more people check it out and they go to the website, they're probably going to sign up for email lists and text messages, which means we're going to get them into our inventory. So our email and our search, our inventory and demand based platforms can go out and make sales, even if we don't necessarily do it, but they're going to do it at 10 times the profit profitability we are. So really, we're just trying to make everybody else on the team far more successful because we don't give a damn about our own ego. We're trying to build money. All right. That being said, we got the three creatives in there. Now we need two primary texts and two headlines. Now I have other videos where I showed you how to build ad accounts like the Alex Ramosi $100 million leads launch event video or the how to build a million dollar winning ad account video. And before that, how to build a 322 ad and how to use ChatGPT and AI. I've shown you how to use tools like ChatGPT and vidIQ and Rev to generate a high confidence copy that's gonna work with what we have. So today I'm gonna to show you a different tool, a different technique, another way of solving the problem because why not show you all of the tricks of my trade? So today, what I've done is actually one of the easiest hacks anybody can do. I actually just Googled Hexclad. Now what's interesting is we're gonna get sponsored results ads. Why not just use the highly converting copy that those other inventory and demand based platforms are already using? To be fair, I could also use the copy from emails, but in this case, we're trying to go more performance marketing and I felt like this is a fun little hack. So we're trying to promote the brand and we typed in the brand name and we're literally going to steal the headlines from the search results. And what do you think is gonna happen when you see the ad and then you type it and then the ads that you see in search match exactly what you see and then you go to the landing page and it's also written the exact same way. When you have continuity in your customer journey, the conversion rate is higher. So let's just leverage the hard work that somebody else already did so that we can make their job easier. It's that simple. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna grab this one right there. Awesome, that's headline number one. And let's grab this one, awesome. That could be headline number two. Now, where are we gonna get our primary text? Well, what's in the search result? We have this lovely string of words here, built with the highest materials and designed to last a lifetime, lifetime warranty. Wow, that's, that's pretty decent copy. And where are we gonna get the other one? I hope you've guessed it. We're just gonna go to the other result. So where are we gonna get the other one? Well, you probably have guessed it by now. We're just gonna go to the other result. Now, if you notice this one, the copy runs on. It's a little too long, or maybe it was written to look like it's a little too long. And what are we gonna do with that? Well, we're probably gonna click on it so we can see the rest of it. This is a really fun uh, PPC hack and I highly recommend you all give it a shot. Don't use up all the characters. Literally give it a dot, dot, dot so somebody has to click. Super, super smart. So that being said, um, let's just use it. And to be fair, we kind of already know what those things are gonna be, but we're not gonna use that in the social ad because somebody could legitimately just hit see more and then realize someone made a mistake and then leave. So what we can do is just get rid of everything up to that last little trick. So we're gonna take out everything up past cooking, boom. And last thing, we're gonna grab the URL of the primary page. So we're gonna click on the ad. We've got the URL. Now, to be fair, it's hexcloud.com. We didn't need to do that, but sometimes you're trying to promote specific products and I might as well show you how to do that. So, Copy, website URL, paste, and there we go. We're done. We built a 322 ad. I think that took all of, what, four minutes? And this ad's only ever gonna get better. And the way I got these creative again is I went to the organic social, knowing that the objective we were trying to achieve, the problem we were trying to solve, the question we wanted to ask was can we build a better prospecting ad? 
Can we build an ad that'll get a really low CPM and create incremental lift, not only to Facebook, but to all other channels? Well, the easiest way of doing that is find your most popular organic social. And when looking at the HexCloud account, recently the most popular organic social was basically just funny videos of Gordon. And if that stops the scroll and gets somebody to click because they read the other words, which were optimized based on the PPC to get the click. Because remember, that's the business objective of Google. It sounds like we're gonna have a pretty easy win on our hands. All right. So remember, it's quite literally that easy. And if you wanna learn more about how I do all of this stuff, check down below. The very first link is the Facebook Ads MBA program. You'll also see links for my newsletter, Disruptor School, a lot of other things. And remember, you deserve more success and less stress. I've called out a lot of folks today, and if you're working with any of them and you want to see more success instead of more stress, you should probably just fire them and look at the work that we're doing here because you could do all of this stuff for free yourself and save hours every week. And if you want more help, that's what the MBA program is for. That's what Disruptor School is for. You'll also see a link down there for Disruptor Agency. And please comment with any questions you have. If you don't understand some of this stuff, let me know. I'll make more content to make it easy. And big shout out to my friends at Hexclad. Jason, it's always been a pleasure to meet with you. You. And a little personal note, um, I was at an event with Nick Sharma and Jason, and Jason brought up his son. And he's like, this is my kid. I got him a job with Nick. And I'm going to put him through your school. And I turned over to Nick, and I was like, yo, Nick, this kid is going to be your best employee because we're going to teach him everything. And basically, everybody got excited. And that was a really fun moment for me. And just shout out to Jason Panzer and the Nine Operators Podcast and the, just, there's a lot of great stuff going on out there. And if you're struggling and you don't feel like somebody cares about you or has your back and things just don't seem to be working out, you don't ever have to feel like that again. You're here now. We'll take care of you. Until next time, I'll see you on the internet. Bye.